Right, so today we're going to have a look at the highest common factor of two numbers. Make sure you've got a piece of paper and a pen and you're making some notes, you've got plenty to try out on this. Now I'm going to start with doing this method one way and then I'm going to have a look at another way later in the video. So I'm going to start off with one way for this first question. I'm going to have a look at how to do it in two different ways. So this says find the highest common factor of 24 and 64. So a factor being a number that fits, fits into these two numbers perfectly. And we're going to try and find the one which is matched in both. So I'm going to start with finding the factors of both these numbers. So I'm going to start with 24, okay, and then I'll have a look at 64. So I'm going to split this up into two halves. So 24, now the first two factors I always find is 1 in itself, so 2 and 24. And then looking at the 1, I always go one number higher, so I'll go for 2. I'll go for 2 and 12, and it's a really nice method of doing it because it starts to limit the amount of factors for each number. So in that first choice here, when i got 1 and 24, I'm only concerned with all the numbers between 1 and 24. But now I've got 2 and 12, I'm only going to look at the numbers between 2 and 12. So I'm going to start with the next number 3. 3 does go in, goes in 8 times, 8, 16, 24. And now, I'm only, now I only need to look at the numbers between 3 and 8. So the next number, 4. 4 goes in, it goes in 6 times, and now the only other number I have to choose from is between 4 and 6, and that number's 5, and it doesn't go in. So there we go, I'm happy I've got all the factors there, I've worked through it in a nice process there. Moving on to 64, we've got 1 and 64, 2 times 32, now does 3 go in, again nice little trick here, add together the digits in 64, so 64 over here, if we add together 6 and 4, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 10 is not well, that's not a 10. 10 is not in the 3 times table, so it doesn't divide by 3. There's a little trick for seeing if something divides by 3. So I'll move on to the next number, 4. 4 does go in. Not very nice here. If you can't work that out, let's just do a little division. So 4's into 64 goes once, remainder 2, and it goes into 24 6 times, so it goes in 16 times. Quite a nasty one to spot there. So now I've only got the numbers between 4 and 16. 5 does not go in. 6 does not go in because 60 gets 6 gets you to 60 and then 66. So 6 doesn't. Does 7 go in? No, it's 6 less than 70. 8 goes in, no, doesn't it? It goes in 8 times. There we go. So it'd be 8 times 8. Now I don't need to write down both of those now because I'm, I'm I'm finished. There are no numbers between 8 and 8, no whole numbers that we're looking for. So we'll get rid of one of those 8s. And there is our factors. Now let's have a look. Which is the highest number in both? Now I'm going to start over here with a 24. So 24 doesn't go in, so not that one. 12 didn't go into 64, so not that one. But 8 being the biggest number here, look, does go into both. So our highest common factor there is 8. So I'm going to abbreviate highest common factor to HCF, and I'll just say the highest common factor equals 8. And there's our first one. Let's have a look at another one following that same process. So find the highest common factor of 75 and 90. So same again. Let's split the page. 75 and 90. And let's start to find some factors. So 1 and 75. 2 doesn't go in. 7 plus 5 equals 12. So therefore it does divide by 3. Okay, Because 12 is in the 3 times table. So 3, and it's 3 times 25. Starting to limit the numbers now. 4 does not go in, it's an odd number, so 4 doesn't. 5 does, because it ends in a 5. I'll do a bit of working out for this one. 5's into 75, 5 goes into 7 once, remainder 2, and then 5 times into, 50, into 25, so it's 5 times 15. Now again, we're limited with the numbers we can choose now. We're only looking between 5 and 15. 6 doesn't, 7 doesn't, because it's 70 and 77. 8 doesn't, because it's even. 9 doesn't, hopefully you know that one. 10 doesn't, and we're starting to run out of numbers now. I know 11 doesn't, 12 can't, because it's even. So there are all our factors there. Moving on to 90. We've got 1 and 90, 2 and 45, 3 goes in 30 times. Does 4 go in? Let's have a quick check. I don't think it does because 4 goes into 80, doesn't it? So 4 is into 80, and then, four, and then 84, 88, 92. So it's definitely not going to go in, but we can check anyway. It goes into that twice, and it doesn't. it only goes into 10 twice with a remainder, so we'd end up with a decimal here, and we'd, we'd, it'd be 22.5. Okay, so we don't want that one. That one doesn't work. 5 goes in, nice little trick for dividing by 5, divide by 10 and double your answer because it fits in twice as many times, so 10 goes into 90, 9 times, so double that, 18, and we've already found two more factors there, we've got 10 and, and 9, let's have a look though, does 6 go in? I believe 6 does go in, let's have a little look, 6 into 90, 6 goes into 9 once, remainder 3, and it goes into 35 times, there we go, so 6 and 15, 7 doesn't, 8 doesn't, but 9 does. 
There we go, and there's no numbers now between nine and 10. So there we go, there's all our factors, little process for trying to work that out, following that logical order there, rather than just guessing ones that come into your head first, because the first one that came into my head there was nine times 10, but it was ended up being the last one that I wrote down. So let's have a look at 75 then. 75 doesn't go in, 25 doesn't go in, but 15 does. There we go. So we'll just write down the highest common factor equals 15. There we go. Just make sure you do write that down. Obviously, it's not just enough just to link it or to show an arrow to both of them. That's good for our working out, but we do need to write that down. One more before we have a go. So last one, the highest common factor of 84 and 35. Not so nice here. I might take a slightly different approach rather than finding all the factors in both this time. So I'm gonna start with 35. One times 35 doesn't divide by two, doesn't divide by three or four. Five goes in though seven times. Now we've limited quite a lot here because in between five and seven is six and six doesn't go in. Six times table goes to 30 then 36. Now rather than writing out all the factors of 84 because I've not got a huge amount here I'm just going to start with the biggest 35 and 35 definitely doesn't go in. The next biggest number is the seven. So if I can check to see if seven goes in I don't need to waste my time writing down all the factors so let's just have a look. 84 We'll divide it by seven. So sevens into eight go once, remainder one, and sevens into 14 go twice. So two factors of 84 are seven and 12, seven being our biggest number there. So the highest common factor is seven. So you can take a little bit of a shortcut when you're doing this sometimes. Start with the smallest number, find all the factors, and then just go process of elimination from the biggest down to the smallest there. So you're gonna have a go, here they are. So pause the video there, and I'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so the highest common factor of 32 and 80. Now the factors of 32 are one and 32, two and 16, let's have a look, three doesn't go in, four does go in, it goes in eight times, and now we're limited here, so we can't have five, we can't have six, and seven doesn't go in. So let's just test these numbers out, process of elimination again, 32 doesn't go in, 16, does 16 go in? So a little think, 16, 32, 48, add six would be 54, add 10 is 64, add 16, add 16 again would be 80. Okay, so 16 does go in, it goes in five times. So there we go. 16 is our highest common factor for the first one. And onto the second one, 36 and 90, factors are 36. So we've got one and 36, two and 18, three and 12, Let's have a look, four goes in nine times, five doesn't, six does, and six goes in six times. I'm not gonna write that down twice. So, 36 doesn't go into 90. Does 18 go into 90? Mm, let's have a look, 90 ends in a zero, so if it does, it'd have to be 18 times five. Let's have a look, what is 18 times five? Five times eight is 40, one times five is five, plus the four is 90. There we go, so actually 18 goes in and that would be our highest common factor. Okay, on to the next one. Highest common factor of 72 and 24. Start with the 24, one and 24, two and 12, three times eight, four times six, and then five doesn't. So let's again start with the biggest number. Does 24 go into 72? Not sure on that one actually, let's have a look. 24, 48, Add four is 52, add the 20 is 72. Oh, there we go. So 24 goes in. Highest common factor is 24. And onto the last one. What have we got? 51 and 85. So let's start with the 51. Now this isn't a very nice one at all. One and 51. And then we've got a spot. What goes into 51? So two definitely doesn't, but does three. I've just noticed that five add one is six. And six is in the three times table. So it must divide by three. So three goes in, and if you're not sure what that is three times, let's have a look. Three's into 51, three goes into five once with a remainder of two, and three goes into 21 seven times, so it's three times 17. I believe these are the only factors. Four doesn't, five doesn't, six doesn't. Seven does seven, seven goes up to 49, so no. Eight doesn't because it's even, nine doesn't, 10 doesn't. Okay, we're starting to run out of numbers, so it's gotta be one of these. So 51 definitely doesn't, does 17 though? Let's have a look if 17 goes in. Again, it ends in a five, so if it does, it'd have to be five times 17. So let's try 17 times five. Five times seven is 35. Five times one is five, add the three is 85. There we go, actually, so it is 17. 
So our highest common factor for that last one is 17. Now we're going to have a look at a different method of approaching this. Okay, so in the previous video we looked at product to prime factors and we're going to use that process to work out the highest common factor of these two numbers and we'll see how we do that. So 24, if I do that as a product to prime factors, I'm going to do these quite quickly. We get 2 and 12, 2 and 6 and then 2 and 3. Okay, and again we circle all our prime numbers there. 108 is a product to prime factor, it's not quite as nice, but if we halve it we get 54, so 54 and 2, half of 54 is 27, 2, 27 is 3 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So we've got our product of prime factors there, circling all the prime numbers. Now if we write out both our lists, let's have a look. So 24, we've got three twos and a 3, so 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 108 is slightly longer, let's have a look, we've got two twos and three threes. So 2 times 2 times, how many was it? And then 3 times 3 times 3. Now to get the highest common factor, all I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at what's in both of them. So in both of these lists here, they both have a 2. They also both have another 2, so they have two 2s each. And then the top number, the 2 times 2 times 3, there's a 3 in there, and there's also a 3 in the bottom. So in both those lists, we have 2 times 2 times 3. And if we multiply those numbers together, 2 times 2 times 3, just in one of the lists, not all six numbers, just these three, we'll get our highest common factor. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. So our highest common factor there is 12. Okay. So it does take a little bit longer, but it does help just to avoid missing any of those factors that we might have done when we were writing a list. Okay, so there's another way of finding the highest common factor. I'm going to do one more, and then I want you to have a go at trying it this way. So we identify the highest, the, the prime factors in our prime factor tree, write our two lists, and we just identify which which prime factors are common in both. And in this case, it was two twos and a three. Let's have a look at one more. So find the highest common factor of 60 and 96. Well, let's do the same again, 60. Up to you how you do this one, but 6 times 10, 2 times 3, and 2 times 5. There we go, so we have 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. 96, not quite as nice. Now it divides by 3, so I'm going to take a slightly different approach here, maybe rather than just halving it. So 96 divided by 3 is 32, so it's 3 times 32, 3 being prime. 32 is 16 times 2, 2 being prime. 16 is 4 times 4, and each of those is 2 times 2. There we go. So there's our prime factor trees. Now if we write out our lists again, let's have a look. Let's do it in the middle. So our list for this left number, the 60, is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And for the 96, we have 5 twos and a 3. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 4 times 2, and then times a 3. Just double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos and a 3. Perfect. So identify what's in both. So there's a 2 in both, there's another 2 in both, and there's a 3 in both. So again, we're going to do the 2 times this 2 here, times this 2 here, times this 3 here at the end. So 2 times 2 times 3, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12 again. There you go. So our highest common factor for these two numbers as well is 12. Now it's not always 12, but these ones just ended up both being 12. But two different trees, two different questions, like you to have a go. So write out your product to prime factors, write them out as a list. We don't have to use the index form there, we can just write it as a full list, and then we can identify what's in both to get the highest common factor. There you go, two questions, so pause the video there, and I'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so find the highest common factor of 48 and 80. So 48, keeping it all nice and tidy, we have two times 24, two times 12, two times six, and two times three. 80 is 8 times 10, 10 is 2 times 5, 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So I'm not going to write the list out because I'm going to run out of space, but let's have a look. We've got a 2 in both, we've got another 2 in both, we've got another 2 in both, and there is another 2 in both. So they don't have, they don't share a 3, they don't share a 5, but they share these 4 2s. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 
just what's in this one here, is 16. So our highest common factor there is 16. Let's have a look at the other one. So 54 and 126, not very nice numbers. So let's have a look. 54 is 2 times 27. 27 is 3 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. On to 126. 126, let's see. That's 63 times 2. 63 is 21 times 3. And 21 is 3 times 7. So let's see again. What's in both? We've got a 2 in both. We've got a 3 in both. And we've got another 3 in both. But this one has an extra 3. This one has an extra 7. So we don't want those. So let's just have a look. What's in this tree here? We've got 2 times 3 times 3. So 2 times 3 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Times it by 3 again is 18. There we go. 2 times 3 is 6. Times 3 is 18. There's our highest common factor. Right, I've got one more question for you to have a go at. And here it is. Okay, so have a go at this question and I'll go over the answer. Right, so 72. 72 is 8 times 9. 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. And 9 is 3 times 3. There we go. So 2, 2, 2, 3, 3. Over to 90. 90 is 9 times 10. 9 is 3 times 3. And 10 is 2 times 5. Okay, so there are our prime factor trees. So writing out 72, 72 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, and 90 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So if we identify then what's in both, they both have a 2, they both have a 3, and they both have another 3. There we go. So looking at what's shared in this list, we've got 2 times 3 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 again, 18. Brilliant. So our highest common factor is 18. There we go. And there's two different ways of working out the highest common factor. That's the end of the video. If you like this video, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.